Hi, my name is Dr. Cassie Mintz, and I'm a clinical geneticist at Mount Sinai in the Division of Medical Genetics and Genomics. My clinical interests include um, rare disorders that have to do with, um, with growth disorders and developmental disorders. Um, I also work closely with our prenatal counselors um, for patients who are pregnant or considering a pregnancy who have rare disorders that are either running in their families um, or who have um, concerns that come up during the pregnancy. Um, I have some clinics um, where we work closely with endocrinologists um, and neurologists as well and multiple other specialists. Um, and I'm hoping um, that we can get patients diagnosed earlier and find more about the underlying causes um, of growth and developmental disorders. Um, so the majority of rare disorders likely have a genetic component, even if we can't necessarily find an answer on testing. Um, and some of the disorders include changes to the chromosomes. Um, some of the more common ones you may have heard about are things like DeGeorge syndrome or Turner syndrome. And then we also have disorders that have changes in specific genes. Um, and one of the common ones that we think about is achondroplasia due to the FGFR3 gene. So genetic disorders can be both inherited, meaning that they're passed down in a family, or they can be new changes that are found in individuals with a disorder. Um, so we really think about changes to the chromosome number or structure and then changes um, to the genes themselves that potentially would make a gene not function properly. So the time it takes for a genetic diagnosis to be found can really be very variable. Um, many rare disorders have a range of possible symptoms or severity, and there are many genetic disorders that have overlapping features um, or overlapping symptoms. And because genetic disorders are rare, it's very important for healthcare providers and researchers at different medical centers and really throughout the world to be able to share patient cases um, and what they've found in their research so that we can hopefully provide diagnoses to most patients. Um, many patients do describe what they call a diagnostic odyssey where it does take time to get a diagnosis. And there are many patients who really may not have a specific name to their disorder yet. Um, even if it is thought to be due to genetics. So it really is variable, but occasionally because we need further advances in our testing technology and our scientific research, it can take several years or even longer to get a diagnosis and other times it's a bit more straightforward. Um, so the treatment for genetic disorders is also very variable and it really depends on the specific disorder. Um, we are learning more and treatments are increasing for genetic disorders. Um, for example, there's a group of disorders called lysosomal storage disorders, where there's a specific enzyme that doesn't work well and causes symptoms. Um, and there are now treatments such as through IVs where we can replace that enzyme and decrease those symptoms or slow the progression of symptoms. Um, and for many genetic disorders where we, might, we may not yet have a treatment, um, knowing the diagnosis can be helpful for families, especially if there are other medical concerns that they need to watch out for. So from my experience with my patients, it's really important for people to know that there can be a lot of uncertainty for a patient who's living with a genetic diagnosis and any rare disorder. Um, often there may be a small group of other patients with the same diagnosis, or they may even be the only person that they know with that specific change. Um, and my advice for patients living with a genetic disorder is to reach out to any advocacy groups and support groups that are available for that disorder or even for a larger group of disorders. And also to stay in touch with your genetics healthcare professionals as our knowledge about rare disorders is expanding and new treatments can be coming out. So I do think strives have been made in the last decade, especially to make genetic testing and access to care more equitable, but we're certainly not there yet. Um, it's important for both medical professionals and patients to continue 
um, advocating for adequate health uh, insurance coverage for genetic testing, both for diagnosis and also coverage for new treatments um, and research that shows the benefits of testing for both early diagnosis and also the benefits of treatments is important. So it's important to know that although these disorders are rare, um, of course, the impact um, receiving a diagnosis and treatment that can, um, can be on patients' lives is large. Um, so both for their physical and emotional health. Um, and seeking genetics care can also allow for um, multidisciplinary care and connections to specialists who are familiar with these rare disorders. Thank you for listening to me today. I hope um, that helps bring light to um, the importance of diagnosing rare disorders. Um, and at Mount Sinai, we have a lot of um, specialized clinics um, for all different types of genetic disorders. Um, and we have access to different specialists, um, especially for my clinic, um, a lot of growth disorders and rare chromosomal disorders. Um, so thank you for joining today.